on both the Schlenk manifold and the glove box, you'll usually need a vacuum for filtering or evaporation. To prevent corrosive chemical vapors from harming the vacuum pump, you'll find a glass apparatus installed in line before the pump. This is called the solvent trap, and it catches those vapors using an extreme drop in temperature. More on that in a second. This is how you usually find the solvent trap at the beginning of the day. Still assembled, but without its o-ring, at room temperature, with some liquid that was captured from the previous day's work. Remove the metal clamp, raise up the trap stem out of the way, and empty the contents of the trap body in an appropriate waste container. With the trap body empty and dry, reassemble the trap. To do so, clamp the trap body back in place, adding the rubber o-ring to the channel on the neck, insert the trap stem, and clamp together using a metal clamp. The rubber hose that is left dangling should be then reattached to the vacuum pump sitting nearby. Turn on the vacuum pump to fully evacuate the trap before proceeding. Listen for any odd noises that would indicate a leak in the system. The vacuum pump will actually be quieter when most of the air has been removed. At this point, you can place a mirror glass dewer under the trap. Be careful as the dewer is itself under vacuum, kind of like a fancy coffee mug. Except this one is super expensive and much more fragile. As you lower the trap into the dewer, make sure the clamp and the trap itself do not come into contact with the dewer. You can see Tashrim using his hand to make sure there's a gap between the clamp and the rim of the dewer. And we're now ready for some cold. What we see now is a trap fully assembled, evacuated, and lowered into a dewer. But this dewer is made for holding liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is a substance we'll be using to freeze out all the vapors that we evaporate into the vacuum system. Safety note, liquid nitrogen is negative 196 degrees Celsius. For you Kelvin fans out there, that's 77 Kelvin. That's closer to absolute zero than it is to room temperature. Skin exposure to liquid or even vapors could result in frostbite, so put on approved gloves for working with cryogens. After Tashum has put on his gloves, he's ready to fill the doer. Slowly and carefully pour liquid nitrogen from its storage tank into the doer. A lot of gas will come out as it boils in contact with the doer and the trap. But as it cools down, the boiling will calm down. Continue filling until the large bulb is immersed. As you work your vacuum in the glove box or in the Schlenk manifold, continue to monitor the level of liquid nitrogen and refill as necessary to maintain that level. Once you're done with the vacuum, it's time to take it back apart again. The first two steps are to raise the trap out of the nitrogen and turn off the vacuum pump. Assuming you do these two steps relatively quickly, it shouldn't really matter which occurs first. However, I prefer to raise the trap before turning off the vacuum. Remove the vacuum hose from the pump to break the vacuum and bring air back into the system. You can disassemble the trap to remove the o-ring now. Then, reassemble the trap to keep it closed and reduce the amount of vapor that gets into the air. The reason I removed the o-ring is because like dissolves like. That o-ring is rubber, and rubber is an organic polymer. Organic solvents that we tend to collect in the trap are also organic, and that rubber o-ring will absorb the solvent vapor and swell or deform. The next time you try to use it, it won't fit in the channel and might not return back to its former shape. Better safe than sorry, next, we should pour the remaining liquid nitrogen back into the storage dewer so that we can use it tomorrow. We will leave the trap to warm to room temperature all by itself. 